Today we're growing mold, not the mold that's left in the back of your fridge from a week ago, and I remember. No, we're growing this. Koji. Useful and tasty. Mm. Yeah, boy. Ingredients are few and simple. Well, mostly. To grow any mold, including koji, you need something to grow it on. Also known as a substrate. Here we have barley and the other popular choice, rice. I'll make both to demonstrate. Any type will do, but pearled barley and polished rice works best. Can you imagine polishing rice though? Fuck that. Last but not least, you'll need koji spores. Links where you can get this down below. Growing koji requires a specific environment, easily obtained with a few simple appliances. And two brain cells. <laughs> I did it with half a brain cell, so you'll be just fine. Here we have a small humidifier. Cheap as chips with a simple manual on and off knob. This is a humidity controller, which will be hooked up to the humidifier to control the... Yes, that's correct. The humidity, which will be similar to a rainforest. <laughs> you also need to control the temperature. Here we have a small space heater, but you can use a growing mat like this too. Same story, manual on and off switch. This thing gets hooked up to a thermostat, which controls the... Yes, D is correct. Well done, golden star and the pat on the back. Here we have a few stained tea towels, which you will steam or boil to sterilize. We use them to line this perforated tray. What's a perforated tray? It's got holes in it, see? Links to all these little things below, as well as the written tutorial with pics. So where do we grow it? If you live on the equator or somewhere tropical, you can just wing it and grow it in a bin bag. Anywhere else, we'll need an insulated thing, like a fridge, styrofoam box, or a wooden cupboard. I grow mine in a cheap soda fridge. The advantage of this is that the thermostat hooks up to the fridge and cools the koji down if stuff gets too hot. We'll set our temperature to 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit and our humidity to 80%. So, you have your fridge and heater plugged into your thermostat and your humidifier hooked up to your humidistat. So, in case it was hard to understand, the humidifier and the heater are both inside the fridge, as well as their cables with probes. Easy peasy, panda sneezy. Before you can inoculate your barley or rice, they need to be rinsed and soaked. Wash off the starch in clean water and discard the starchy water. Don't skip the step. If you do, tears might follow and you'll woodpecker my brain. Once clean and drained, soak in fresh, clean water overnight in the fridge or at room temp for about six hours. This step is even more important than the washing. So again, no taking shortcuts, cowboys. Once the soaking is done, remove it from the fridge or just continue from room temp. Drain it through a sieve or colander and get rid of the soaking water. Most of the things you grow koji on needs to be steamed instead of boiled. Otherwise, it won't grow properly. I did warn you, so either you steam it on the stove in that same colander or you're fancy like me and have a steam oven. Once your sauna is nice and steamy, steam the cloths and from here on everything has to be sterile. Otherwise, you're gonna grow this puppy. And we don't want that. Next, line your tray with another cloth. Then get the substrate in there and spread it out. Substrate, remember, is just an unusually fancy name for the stuff you grow the mold on. And that could be almost anything even this chef's kiss prosthetic arm. Next up, the same goes for the barley or that prosthetic arm. Get your substrate into the steamer and steam it until it's cooked, but not fucked, if you know what I mean. Check it every now and then for best results. If you are unable to determine doneness, steam the barley for 50 minutes, the rice for 35 minutes, and the prosthetic arm for one minute just to sterilize it. When done, the stuff will be hot, 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 too hot to mix with the mold spores. So let it cool down to 36 degrees Celsius or 96.8 degrees Fahrenheit, or around a body temp. Otherwise, you kill the koji spores and go to jail forever. Meanwhile, weigh out your spores according to your brand's instructions. Yes, the spores come in different forms and strains. For our purpose, any type of Aspergillus orisae. Fancy name for this mold will do. Sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. Mix, mix, mix. Line your tray with a slightly damp steamed cloth and get the barley into the tray. Spread it out well and cover with another damp steamed stained tea towel. Same process goes for the rice. Cool to body temp, inoculate with mold. That's a sprinkle with spores and mix to us average folks. Get it into a lined tray. Spread it out, tuck it in tight. Kiss it. 
then move it to your homemade equator chamber, also going by the name Incubator. Very important, stick the thermostat probe straight into the substrate. Koji creates its own heat as it grows, so it's vital you do this to avoid tears, domestic abuse or both. Close the dungeon door and let it grow for 48 hours. You can link your thermostat and your midi stat to your phone via Wi-Fi. Make sure to get the Wi-Fi version indicated by the Wi-Fi sign. This way you can control the temp from far away and get instant alerts if the temp jumps or drops too much. Highly recommend it. Links below for the ones I use. After about 24 to 36 hours you'll see some mold growth. It's advised at this stage to break it up and spread it out like this. Then cover it up again and back into the incubator it goes for the remaining time. Then when the time is up you pull it out and open up to reveal a fluffy white slab of perfect koji also known as a koji cake. It should smell a little bit mushroomy, a little bit sweet, like overripe apricots. As is, it's pretty tasty, but it's not grown for the purpose of snacking. It's grown to produce enzymes that can break up proteins into amino acids and carbohydrates into sugars, making stuff tastier and easier to digest. And that's keeping it very simple. It's science. Our attention span won't handle the dirty details today. That's for another life, or video at least. Now that you've successfully grown your first koji, you can make more koji spores by leaving it in the incubator for another 24 hours before drying at room temp, grinding into a powder and storing in the freezer. This way you don't have to buy spores ever again, just in case you have T-Rex syndrome and can't reach your pockets. To store koji, simply pop it into a plastic bag, tie it up and chuck it into the frozen abyss for later if you're one of those that lose interest fast. Or dry it out in a dehydrator until bone dry at 40 degrees celsius or 104 degrees fahrenheit for 24 hours. Once bone dry, blend it into a fine flour in a coffee grinder or high speed blender. Sieve it and blend the grainy bits once more. Add a bit to your bread dough next time you bake or use instead of flour for making your beloved fried chicken. The list is long but not endless. Perhaps the easiest and best known koji preparation is shio koji. To make it, blend fresh or dried koji with water and salt until you have somewhat of a paste. It makes a fantastic marinade for meat, fish and vegan foods like chicken. But most importantly, if you want to make Greta happy and contain the hotness, it can also be used to keep you tender and tasty. However, results may mm -hmm. vary. And if you like to ferment something simple, go and watch this video on my bread kvass. As usual, thanks for watching. See you next time. Love you long time. Bye bye.